Good morning. Um, as Les said, we are um, in the math department at St. Rock. A number of teachers are involved in a TLLP. For those of you that might not be familiar with it, it's the Teacher Learning and Leadership Program. It's funded by the Ministry of Ontario and it essentially supports teachers who wish to do research in their classrooms. So our inquiry, our focus this year is using iPads for assessment purposes. And we are focusing on assessment for and as learning. Um, what we want to do is we want to break the mold of what the traditional high school math classroom looks like. Um, math at the secondary level will either invoke terror or joy. And um, I think a lot of it comes from the fact that we're constantly quiz, quiz, test, quiz, quiz, test, quiz, quiz, test. And uh, when students get those marks back, it can be kind of demoralizing for them. So we want to break that mold. And I can tell you that in my classroom, I haven't quizzed once this year. It's been about coaching throughout the learning process, using these digital tools. And uh, I can honestly say my students are happy, they're engaged, and they're, not do they're doing just as well, if not better, than in the other years that I've been teaching. And uh, mindset obviously plays a key role. We celebrate mistakes in my classroom. They have to understand that you have to make mistakes. Math has to be messy a little bit and we all learn from each other's mistakes. So I just would like to highlight a couple of the things that we've used as part of our TLLP. One of them, this is where we kind of started our journey, we uh, use these online assessment tools. This one's probably my favorite. It's called Socrative.com. And um, basically what happens is when I hit a certain part in the learning where I feel like I need to gauge where students are at before I can move on, I will uh, create, there are multiple choice questions, I can go in and very quickly create a few questions that will tell me where my students are at. I, call, I tell my students, this is like a checkpoint for me, I just want to know if we're ready to move on. And I often go to EQAO, the school before was talking about those close answers in EQAO. EQAO is very good at um, addressing common misconceptions, so they'll have two answers that are very close. And um, so I often go to them to see if I can find where students thinking, it, where they're having issues. So here, uh, if you can notice, down the left-hand side, those would be all student names, which I've coded out. And um, as they go in, I'm watching in real time on my laptop what the students' responses are. So the green will light up correct answers and the red come up as incorrect answers. Um, each column, there are six of them there, each column represents a different question. So it allows me to do two things. I can see on the left hand side I've outlined, there's two arrows there. There are two students that I obviously need to focus on before we can move on successfully. It also tells me that in question number six, everyone was having issues with that. And they weren't all answering the same answer. They were all over the place. So what I would do is I would click at the very top, question number six, and it immediately brings up the question. So I can look at it and say, okay, I obviously need to go back, review this question with the students, we take it up as a class, we discuss strategies, and we build the solution together. Um, the other thing that we did, uh, the next part of our journey was descriptive feedback. I wanted to be able to give students feedback and to have them respond to that feedback and to be able to keep track of it in one nice platform. So at the end of October, we were given OneNote Classroom on our iPads. Um, it is part of our Microsoft 365 suite, but I wanted it on our iPads so that our students could ink. Math is about being able to write on the iPads, not necessarily about typing. So we do have, we have our own set of iPads now with the ministry grant that we were given. We also have styluses to go with those iPads. So students will go in. This is a, a screenshot of one of my students' notebooks. You can see across the top, maybe faintly, there's tabs. So for each unit, there's a tab. I can create entrance tickets, exit tickets. I, the notes, I just distribute it to all their notebooks and I tell them we're not spending time in class taking notes anymore, it's a waste of time. So um, we are more engaged in activities. I can give them an exit ticket. This was one that I had given them. They can leave class. I can give them the results or I can give them some feedback, either in writing, and you can see um, I have some blue writing in there, that's mine, because she had a little bit of difficulty with finding a rate of change. And uh, the other beautiful thing too is that I can drop in, if it's a little bit more detail that they need, I can actually drop in audio, which I've done. So I can record my voice 
uh, for the students and I kind of highlight it, say please click here and then I can just speak to them and tell them, give them guiding questions, help them move on to the next step. And I tell them, make sure you check your notebook tonight. They can go home, they can check on their phone, it's a free app. They listen to my feedback or read my feedback and this student made corrections down the right hand side in red. So it was, it's just turning out to be a fantastic tool, a great platform for students. Um, the other thing within OneNote is collaboration space. Just very quickly, this was a great lesson that we did. Um, collaboration space is one place. The notebook itself is private. Nobody can see it except the student or myself. Collaboration space is an area where we can all go in and learn together, brainstorm. Um, what I did was I created an activity where I gave a page to each group in the classroom. Uh, very intentionally picked the activities, gave them to each group, let them work on it. At the end of it, we were able to build the learning goals success criteria. We covered two major topics in grade nine, academic math, partial variation and direct variation. There was no question at the end of this lesson that every student in my class understood the difference and they could tell from a graph from an equation, from a table of values, from words, everything. So we were able to then come together in this space and learn from each other. So our next steps, um, it would be great now, so we want students to take this feedback that we've given them, we want to be able to self them to be able to self-assess, to peer assess, um, we would like for them to build a digital portfolio because we started kind of late with the OneNote and now we see the possibilities with it. We're going to be starting with it right away second semester. Students can build their notebook and take it with them. They can have it in grade 10, grade 11, grade 12 and always refer back to it. And um, the last activity that I did where we're able to take key a few key um, expectations and put them into one activity instead of being today's 5.1, tomorrow's 5.2, the next day's 5.3, being able to put ideas together and then and give authentic assessment tasks uh, is extremely valuable and that last activity highlighted that for me so that's something we're going to look into because as we know time is always an issue. So uh, if we can build some authentic tasks that cover a few expectations and allow us to do good assessment with these students, then uh, that's where we're gonna, we're gonna head for second semester. Thank you.